So you can see medical oxygen concentrator, uh, it's an equipment which is used to provide oxygen supply to the patients. So it is not only for patients, it can be used by anyone who have, uh, who need oxygen, right? So why we need oxygen in the blood? That is the first question. So we are breathing. So we are inhaling the air from our atmospheric air, the ambient air which is going inside when you are inhaling. So this inhaled air contains oxygen. Do you know what is the ambient air contains? Ambient air contains around 21 percentage of oxygen and 78 percentage of nitrogen and rest of the gases like carbon dioxide and other gases. So that is just a very minor percentage, just one percentage contains. So 21 percentage of oxygen and 78 percent of nitrogen. So when we are inhaling your air, so when we are breathing, the inspiration air contains only 21 percentage of oxygen. So that means from this 21 percentage of oxygen, uh, that oxygen will diffuse into your blood through the lung. So you must know the physiology of the lung, how it works. It just have a, it have a semi permeable membrane where the diffusion of gases will occur between the atmospheric air and as well as the blood. So blood may be having carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is the end product of our physiological activities. We call cellular respiration. So when we eat food, the food and the oxygen get mixed, uh, used for producing energy in the cells. So end product of this is called as the carbon dioxide and also there is waste products, right? So this carbon dioxide gas is formed. So this carbon dioxide will be exchanged to the lung and the oxygen in the lung will be diffused into the blood. So this is a simple way I can explain you about what is happening when you're breathing. So what is happening now, the 21 percentage of the air from the atmosphere, when you're breathing normally, okay, we, you and me, the healthy people, when we are breathing normally, the 21 percentage of oxygen in the atmospheric air will go to the lungs. And from that, a certain amount of oxygen will be diffused into the blood. But the patients are, who are diseased, maybe what kind of diseases, yes, there is a lot of things to describe, but I can say one kind of can be an inflammation to the lung tissues, or there is an infection like a pneumonia, you know, the COVID-19, the one of the major uh, the, uh, symptom which is having a pneumonia. So pneumonia, what it will do, it will infect your uh, lung tissues and its ability to exchange the oxygen will reduce. So another case is like, or you have a breathing problem. So you have a ch chest uh, muscles have some kind of damage. So maybe example, say by an accident. So the patient got the ribs broken or the chest muscles damaged because the chest muscles play a major role in breathing inhale. So inhaling the air. So because it's, a, it's an effort, so you have to just look, look, look at the, uh, this uh, physiology of the breathing, how the uh, normal respiration works. Because you know, the lung is a soft tissue. It cannot contract and relax. So our chest is moving, right? When we are inhaling the air, our chest will expand. And when we are exhaling, chest will relax. How it is doing? The lung is not doing that function. It is done with the help of our muscles. So even though your muscles are having damage, so maybe it can be an accident or sometimes you got infected. You, so there is different kinds of situations where you're not inhaled. So what happened as a result? The volume of air you're inhaling will reduce. And that is why we need an oxygen concentrator. In this case, we need to provide higher oxygen concentration. That means instead of giving 21 percentage, so normally we can breathe this just 21 percentage. So we need to give a higher amount of oxygen to the patient lung so that the oxygenation can be increased because the volume you are taking is reduced. Now you need to give a higher percentage of oxygen. Your lungs are, maybe another case is that lungs are infected. So the lung gas, uh, the gas diffusion is, uh, rate is reduced. So the option is to give a higher percentage of oxygen uh, with the help of an oxygen cylinder, or we can give it with the help of uh, we can uh, uh, higher percentage of oxygen, or we can give it with the help of oxygen concentrator. Okay, so there is a chat box. Okay, so whenever in this Zoom app, you can see there is a chat box. So you can ask questions here. So uh, within after completing certain portions, we will um, proceed to the, uh, we can, I can start attending the questions. Now we can see the stethoscope. Stethoscope is one of the basic equipment required for any doctors. 
right? So to treat, uh, treat to identify the breath rate, whether the patient is breathing, or to listen to the heart sound. So you can see this is a basic diagnostic tool a, a hospital requires. So similarly, an oxygen cylinder, it's also a basic equipment required for every hospital because without oxygen cylinder, even a small clinic cannot operate. So this oxygen cylinder has some demerit. What is that? This get exhausted, right? So we can use it for maybe for four or five hours of time. And after that, the cylinder should be refilled. The cylinder will be weighing around 15 to 20 kg. And we need to refill it. How it is refilled? It's refilled by, with the help of uh, some kind of third party uh, services. Uh, they, uh, they will uh, bring the supply of uh, oxygen, sub, uh, gas supplies to the hospital. So that is a demerit of this oxygen cylinder. So that is why this equipment can be replaced with an electronic equipment, nothing but an oxygen cylinder. Sorry, this oxygen cylinder can be replaced with the help of another electronic equipment, which is nothing but an oxygen concentrator. So here you can see the oxygen cylinder having some kind of controls. There is some kind of uh, valves are there, regulators are there. So with the help of that, they will adjust the flow rate. They can adjust the pressure. They can adjust the flow to the patient. So sometimes we need to increase the flow for, for the patient when he want more oxygen or he just need moderately oxygen, we can keep a lower flow. So we keep the flow rate like five liters or six liters per minute or even three liters per minute, we can adjust the flow rate. So that is what you're saying, the, this pressure gauges, this regulators, which is fitted on this equipment. Now, so how do we know the patient needs an oxygen or not? That is why a very important question. Anyway, as an engineers, we are not going to deal with this. We are not going to do anything on the patient side. We are just working on the equipment side. So this is a small device, which is called as a pulse oximeter. We call it as fingertip pulse oximeter. So with the help of this device, we can measure the blood oxygen level. So you can see it is inserted to the finger and this, uh, it, it, it contains some kind of technology, which is called pulse oximetry. That is a principle. If you want to learn about it, you can read about it. It is nothing called as pulse oximetry. So with the help of pulse oximetry, what we can do is that we can send, uh, we can measure this blood oxygen level. So it is using two uh, wavelengths. One is infrared light, infrared wavelength, and again is the red light. So these two lights will be passed to the finger. And uh, based on the absorption of this wavelength by the blood, it will calculate the percentage of oxygen. Not just uh, oxygen, you also measure a uh, respiration rate. It will display a graph, which is called plethysmograph. So it can measure a uh, few other extra parameters also. So through this method, pulse oximetry, which will measure SpO2, we'll call it as blood oxygen is uh, named as SpO2, nothing but saturation of peripheral oxygen. The normal range is between 90 to 100. This is an important understanding for you. So the normal range of a blood oxygen, when you measure with a fingertip pulse oximeter in your arterial blood, we have vein, arteries, many things are there. So arterial blood, it should be between 90 to 100 percentage. So it's a very long topic to discuss about this. So it's, a, it's an individual topic itself to discuss about the specific technology, how it works, etc. So I'm not going to that topic now. And now I'm starting with uh, going to the move to the other one. So your understanding here is very simple. The pulse oximetry is a device which can be used to measure the blood oxygen level. So even you can see it is used in even now it, during this COVID days, it, it is also used in airports and many other places because if the patient have a pneumonia, uh, the blood oxygenation level will be reduced. So normally I told it will be between 90 to 100 percentage, but it can be sometimes 90 percentage or 85 percentage. That means your lung gas exchange is not working properly. So that is why uh, this device is important. And again, if you go to hospital, what do you see? multi patient monitor, and it is in an ICU or operation theater, such kind of places, you will be able to see a multi patient monitor. So this multi patient monitor can measure many things like SpO2, it can measure ECG, blood pressure, many other parameters, including the uh, cardiac output. That means the, the, the blood pumping rate from the heart. So this device will cost around one to uh, 10 lakhs is the normal 10 lakhs Indian rupees. That is the price range of this equipment. So, but a fingertip pulse oximeter, you can just maybe purchase around 3,000 to 5,000 rupees. A basic device, basic device you can purchase. Why basic means the accuracy, the technology, there is a lot of differences in that. So 
you can see that many companies are there in the segment like Philips Healthcare, G Healthcare, many companies, they manufacture this monitors and uh, pulse oximeter of these products. Now, if you go to hospital, this is a very small information to you. If you go to hospital, how the patient get oxygen? Uh, you may see that oxygen cylinders are used. So that may be if you go to a small hospital, you may see, see oxygen cylinders. But if you go to a large hospital, multi-specialty hospital, you will see there is a, a gas pipeline system implemented around the hospital. So if you go to ICU or it is in an operation theater, you can see the wall mounted sockets of gas spots. You can see these kind of ports here. So we can see the white pot represents the oxygen and air is there. So air means what? The normal air, ambient air. So what is this here? This oxygen, what you're seeing on this wall mounted port, this is a high pressure oxygen. That means it's around 50 PSI to 60 PSI. PSI, you know, the unit of pressure, pounds per square inch. That is a unit. So if you look into your bike or car tire, what is the pressure inside that? That is around 25 PSI to 30 PSI. 30, 35 PSI is the pressure of a, uh, inside the a tire of a vehicle. But the oxygen supply inside the hospital, it's a pressure is around 50 PSI to 60 PSI. That is a pressure required, minimum pressure. Why that much pressure is required? Because it is used for many other purpose, not directly to the patient. If I give directly to the patient, obviously you know that the lungs will damage, even, uh, even chest can damage, that's a huge pressure. So you'll be regulating and giving to the patient. So, but why this much pressure is required is that this uh, uh, supplies are also used for connecting to other equipments like ventilators, anesthesia machine, such kind of equipment. So oxygen supply is there. Oxygen means 100% of oxygen. So from this port, if you connect to a patient, you'll get 100% of oxygen. And here you get air, normal air, ambient air, contains nitrogen, 78%, 21% of oxygen, all those things. Just it's a compressed air. That's what I can say. The next is vacuum. Vacuum is nothing but a negative pressure. So it is used for mainly for suction application. So we need to suck the fluids, blood or something uh, from the patient. So we can use a vacuum, nothing but a negative pressure, say by a negative uh, 10 PSI, such kind of things. So here I go for uh, another thing which is not available in this one is uh, carbon dioxide. You can see in the opposite side it is there, carbon dioxide. Again, that is also used for some surgical procedures like la laparoscopic surgery. Now how they get the oxygen, right? So they get oxygen from uh, oxygen plant, maybe it will be located in the basement of the hospital some, now sometimes, or it may be in the another location, which is uh, just next to hospital, maybe a separate building may, they may be having. So this oxygen plant have maybe multiple oxygen cylinders will be connected there. That means this cylinder should be replaced whenever this uh, gas is getting exhausted. So that, that is what, the, that is a deem rate of this oxygen cylinder. So we need to replace this oxygen cylinders and that is going to be expensive. So that is why we have another thing which is called oxygen concentrator. So previously I have shown an image which is a portable oxygen concentrator which is used for home healthcare application. That means it can be used for the patients in the home. And this is an equipment which is a large equipment which cost even 50 lakhs to one crore is the cost of this machine. And this can be used for an entire hospital itself to generate oxygen. So the oxygen cylinders can be replaced with an oxygen concentrator. So presently I can say maybe only very less number of hospitals, maybe a five or 10 hospitals in India, maybe across have this kind of oxygen concentrator plants. So what is the benefit of this equipment? This provide, this generate oxygen just with the help of electricity. It does not require much maintenance. It also requires maintenance, there is no doubt, but the cost effectiveness of that maintenance is very high. So that is why in future hospitals can go for this equipment. Now, this another equipment, what you're seeing, it is a portable machine. It is used for home healthcare. The way both the machines are working is similar. Okay, now we are focusing on home healthcare application, this portable machine, because that individual machine will be sufficient for serving an individual patient. Okay, so this equipment you can see here, uh, that is nothing but an oxygen concentrator, a portable machine. And this is just another machine. You can see it's the height of this machine. Just you can see it is just in the height of a uh, knee of a patient 
Okay, so the output, how much output this machine gives? So if I connect to electricity, this machine can give you the oxygen percentage up to 99 percentage. Okay, so the output pressure is 5 PSI. So when it is coming from this machine to the patient, you can see a tube is connected to the patient. So the oxygen which is flowing through that, that is having pressure of 5 PSI. I told you that oxygen cylinder having 50 to 60 PSI, but this machine will give you just 5 PSI. But when it is again going to the another machine which we discussed, this gas plant, oxygen concentrator, this huge machine, that will be capable of generating high pressure, 50 to 60 PSI. But that is not required for a, a, a patient in the home. So that is why it is limited to 5 PSI. So never compare a ventilator with an oxygen concentrator. So this is the biggest mistake people make sometimes. So ventilator is to ventilate the patient. That means it will push the air into the lungs. It will push the air into the lungs because the patient is not able to breathe. See, oxygen concentrator cannot push the air into the lungs. The oxygen concentrator can deliver the oxygen uh, to the nose of the patient with the help of a mask. Okay, so with the help of a mask, you can just deliver the oxygen to the, uh, till the nose tip of the patient with the help of a oxygen concentrator. But if the patient is not at all capable of breathing, example, it's a completely uh, unconscious, or the patient is completely not able to expand his uh, chest, or he is not able to inhale inside, right? Because he don't have any, uh, his uh, muscles are not capable of uh, performing the respiration. So then oxygen concentrator cannot do anything with that. We need to complete the ventilator. So, that, so don't compare with this. These two are totally different equipments. One is producing oxygen. Another one is ventilating the patient. Okay, so there is a question. A rap, somebody is asking a question. So what happens if the oxygen, con oxygen in the oxygen concentrator machine is finished? So this machine, oxygen will never finish, okay, because it is generating oxygen. Okay, so I will explain you, explain you how the oxygen will be generated. That is what I'm going to proceed to that slides. Now look at this machine. The patient is ventilated with a uh, ventilator. Okay, this is a very long topic. It, it, it needs even five to 10 webinars to conduct, a, uh, 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 explain about a ventilator. So I'm not going to uh, detail about that product. Now, it needs few things. One, it needs electricity, right? It needs two more things. One, it needs is around 50 PSI of oxygen supply is required. That means high pressure oxygen supply is required. So electricity is required for a ventilator. And again, also it requires a high pressure air supply. Okay, these two things are required. So why it requires is that, why ventilator requires oxygen and air supply? Nothing but it needs to give oxygen to the patient look at this. So finally, if you want to give the patient 60% oxygen, you know that atmospheric air contains only 21%. Now it needs to give 60% it will give. 70% user can set that how many percentage of oxygen. So how it is possible? Because the ventilator is connected with air and oxygen supply, it will be mixing air and oxygen in a specific ratio to achieve this percentage. But let me repeat once again, when purpose of ventilator is not just giving oxygen, that is only one of its function, one of its major function. Right. So this is a home health care equipment, right? So just be in the market for around 30, 40 years of time. And nowadays it is becoming very popular and because every patient who is shifted to home, see two cases we can use. Assume that you have one of your relative who was sick and they want to be shifted to house. Why they want to shift it to house? Because the, their treatment in the hospital is over. Now they can be shifted to home where they can continue the treatment. So they need oxygen. So usually you will be depends on oxygen cylinders, but refilling this oxygen cylinder is very tough process. So that is why we go for oxygen concentrator. Second case, assume that you are staying in a place like a Delhi where there is a high pollution. Okay, high pollution, dust, uh, the vehicle smoke pollution, very high pollution is there. And if you are facing a breathing difficult, if you are facing a difficulty in breathing and you can buy, you can buy an oxygen concentrator. Okay, so you can buy an oxygen concentrator 
and you can breathe good air. You can see the uh, lady which is in this image, she looks very healthy. That means she is not sick, right? She is not a patient. She is just using an oxygen concentrator for breathing quality of air, quality of oxygen, right? So she, she wants good oxygen. She can be, because as you know, the oxygen is required in the body for all purpose, the production of energy. So uh, everything in the body without oxygen, we cannot live. So the quality of the air you inhale, the oxygen you re receive, that matters. Otherwise you may feel very tired and you can get infected. Your lungs can have uh, infection. So there is many other complications. Now, so what it is providing here is that it's providing around 90 to 99 percentage of oxygen. So a healthy person like this lady, she may not requires, she may not requires um, 99 percent of oxygen. She just can have 50 percentage of oxygen, right? So we have controls on the equipment. We have some regulators. We can adjust the uh, regulators and we can have a better oxygen flow. So it is cost effective. That is already discussed. A cylinder, we need to refill it, the cylinder. So we need to depend upon the a third party to supply the cylinder refilling. So there is no refilling, nothing here. Once you purchase this machine, you can use this machine for five to six years of time without any trouble. Only thing you need to have is that you need to have a electric supply. Electricity supply should be provided. And second, yes, there is also a minor maintenance which is required for this machine. Every equipment requires maintenance, right? So there is a minor uh, maintenance required for this. So it is used in many applications. I told you hospitals, we can use it. Home, we can use it. Oxygen therapy, you just need to breathe good oxygen. You can go for this machine. Pharmaceutical manufacturing, sometimes manufacturing companies also needs product, uh, pharmaceutical uh, case also. They need oxygen as a catalyst. And the defense, what is the defense in the sense? What is that? If you see, you know, the present situation, we are facing the problems with uh, from China, right? So where our soldiers are in Ladakh how they are surviving. In higher altitude, there is a lack of oxygen. How they will survive? Can they depend on oxygen cylinders? No, if they depend on oxygen cylinders, transportation of oxygen cylinder will be a, a highly difficult, right? And refilling, everything is difficult. So that is why we can go for an oxygen concentrator. Because oxygen concentrator, what it will do is that it will take the atmospheric air. It will take the atmospheric air, it will separate oxygen from that and it will give to the patient in a higher higher partial pressure okay we'll discuss that so you can see the defense application even helicopters so helicopters don't have a pressurized cabin so they will face when they go for higher altitude they will also face problems in breathing even fighter jet uh, planes so where the fighter jet planes uh, the pilot needs oxygen supply so they you may see that they are wearing a mask Right, so what is that? It is maintaining a pressure, even they also need oxygen, oxygen cylinders cannot be used. Now let's look at the equipment, right? So this equipment I'm discussing here, it is, it's, it's the technology which is working is common to everything. But the technology what we are discussing here is Respironics, uh, which is from the Philips. So this is the same technology everyone is using. And uh, there is a minor variations in the way the product is designed for different, different type of manufacture. So this uh, product uh, will cost approximately around 50 to 60,000 rupees. So this is the cost of this product. 50,000 to 60,000 Indian rupees is the cost of this product. And when you buy it, it comes with a one year of warranty. So there is also different brands in this segment that will cost you 70, 80,000 rupees. So the Philips is one of the mid segment product. I can see this Everflow is a mid segment product. And even there is a lot of Chinese players because there is a lack of Indian players in the segment. So the Chinese players, they supply you maybe around 40 to 50,000 rupees. Okay, somebody was asking whether the slide will be uh, shared. See, the slide is my proprietary slide. So won't be sharing with anyone. So if you want, you can take the notes. And uh, we are also publishing a YouTube live. So where you can, uh, maybe you can watch again from the YouTube when, where is it required. So look at this equipment, how portable it is, right? It's just a, a size of a water can and the weight is around 14 to 15 kg. 14 to 15 kg is not any easy, right? Just like you lift a water can, that means it is, uh, it's just uh, heavy. So it's difficult 
and that is the weight of this machine and you can see some wheels are there the machine the bottom side you can see there are some caster wheels are there so that we can move inside a room why it is uh, heavy because it contains a compressor inside that there is an electrical motor it's a 300 watts compressor which is used inside to compress the air so how the complete process is working how this equipment is working i will explain step by step so first look at the exterior part of this machine now handle this machine have a handle handle is not to lift the machine yes sometimes we can lift it if you want to change from one to room to another room but or, or moving is uh, with the casters is very easy power cable we need to give a, a electric power supply with this power cable and inside this machine there is a compressor as i told you 300 watts compressor so it's a 230 volt compressor that means in don't have any inbuilt battery inside that so with a 12 volt battery or 24 volt battery we cannot run an oxygen concentrator because it's high current consuming so if you want a battery backup you have to go for a ups or inverter supply with a, which can supply a 230 volt supply with the help of that you can run an oxygen concentrator but again the backup time will be also should be careful okay i will come to that point again so that means it don't have any inbuilt batteries inside this so power supply should be connected back side you can see the 230 volt ac input supply and next is that look at this pictures where you can see a filter so there is an air filter air intake filter so through this air intake filter if this machine will be taking atmospheric air so atmospheric air contains what is that it contains 78 percent of nitrogen 21 percentage of oxygen so wherever you are placing you are placing inside a room and from that room this air will be taken by this air filter right and it will remove the dust particles from that dust particles can be removed with the help of this air filter so you can see where the air filter is placed the location of the filter and there is a cap you can see the left side image that is showing that cap is connected so that is filters inside the machine now power on button right so you can see the left side image again there is a power on off button so by turning that on or off you, you can switch on that is the only major button in this machine so i just press the button the machine starts the machine starts by the compressor starts so you will also see some kind of small vibration from this machine because there is a motor right so this motor will be giving a minor vibration some noise will be there from this machine okay so but there is also machine available which have low capacity low capacity means low output pressure low oxygen percentage output such kind of machines are there which have low uh, electric low rating electric motor such things so the noise will be less so i'm not comparing i'm not going to that kind of different different varieties of machines so this is the general type of machine which is required for every type of patient right majority of the machines 99 percentage of oxygen concentrator you see in india in hospitals or in home care they purchase that is having at 300 watts uh, to sometimes 250 watts or 300 watts motor will be present so when you turn there will be a vibration some kind of little noises will be there from the machine now you can look at this uh, connector you can see a aluminium connector which is marked over this image through that the oxygen the final output of oxygen will come so that can be connected to the patient so a small connector right that is the output of this machine so input we see in air filter section and this is the output section right and obviously there is a nasal cannula you can see here nasal cannula which should be connected to the nose right so how we connect to the patient so we need to connect a nasal cannula or we need a mask face mask right so look at this nasal cannula is connected to the nose so that we need to it won't go inside the nose keep in mind it is just reaching to the tip of the nose something you can see which is going inside it's just a very short length it won't go inside nasal cannula the right side you can see is face mask so you see in one patient which i was showing the lady which is connected she was using a nasal cannula that means for a normal common people we can go for nasal cannula if you are not a patient nasal cannula is enough just okay tomorrow you're buying an oxygen concentrator just for breathing a good quality of oxygen then uh, get a nasal cannula it comes with the machine it comes with the machine one set but it is a disposable accessory that means you need to replace it infrequently within every five days or something you need to keep replacing this nasal cannula otherwise it, there is a chance of infections so be careful otherwise if the patient okay you have a patient relative who is deceased and she's uh, sick she's in a bed rest 
and she wanted oxygen, then go for a mask. Why mask is required? So the mask will prevent mixing of this oxygen with atmospheric air. So the mask will uh, direct the oxygen straight away into the uh, nose. And obviously face mask has some holes over here. You can see some holes, some holes in the sides of this mask. That is mainly for exhaling. So we need to exhale out. And that is how through this mask it can be done. Okay, Param is asking output is 90 to 96 percentage. Then what if the patient wants little more supply? Percentage is not indicating the supply. Okay, percentage is not indicating the supply. I will come to that topic. See, if the patient is critical, then we have to move the patient. Still with, say I told you, we are going to measure percentage of oxygen in the blood with the pulse oximeter. Assume that you connected a patient with oxygen concentrator, but even after that SpO2 level, the patient blood oxygen level is not improving. Still it is 90% or less than that. So what do you will do? Whether increasing the output is enough? No. That means even after giving oxygen, patient oxygen uh, blood oxygen level is not increasing. That means patient is not able to breathe. His inhalation process is not working. So that means even though if you give an oxygen, the patient, the oxygen will not reach the lungs. That means you have to connect the patient now to a ventilator. Which is beneficial one. See, if it is a patient, we have to go for mask because mask will prevent uh, this uh, oxygen going out of the uh, nose tip. If you're a healthy person, don't go for mask because you need a free breathing, right? Go for mas nasal cannula. Obviously, one vanilla something asking blockage in the filter. Yeah, that's uh, obviously blockages can be that. That is why maintenance is required. Machine should not be kept in a dusty environment. Okay, so there is many things regarding this. So it's a, it's not a training, right? Just a one and a half hours of session. We are discussing about that. So there is some. Uh, if we start discussing many things, it will take more time. So we'll mainly focus on the working part of the equipment now. Now this is a mask. Mask is there. So a tube is there. Through the tube, we'll connect to the patient. So now the humidifier board. So what is the humidifier board? This is very important. So you know that inside there is an electrical compressor, there is electronic sensors, many things. When the air is passing through this compressor, because the compressor will be hot, right? So what happens is your air will get, uh, the humidity will be lost from the air. Why? The heating is happening. So if you give the dry air to the patient, the final oxygen, the dry oxygen, if you give to the patient, it can dry the lungs of the patient and that will result in lung damages. That is why before giving to the patient, we need to connect a humidifier bottle, which contains, which, which we have to fill with water. So this is a bottle we have to fill. There will be a level indicator to that level. We need to fill water, distilled water, we call it as medical grade distilled water. Or if it is not, a, if it is a healthy person, just have a, uh, just you can have a normal drinking water, but if it is a patient, medical grade distilled water should be filled to a, the level which indicates. So you can see here where the humidifier bottle. So output of the machine at, from the tube, it will be connected to humidifier bottle. Humidifier bottle contains uh, distilled water and the distilled water, when it is exposed, the oxygen is getting exposed to the distilled water, it will be humidified and that will be given to the patient. Now we can see the arrow mark from the output of the machine to the humidifier bottle. And again, from the humidifier bottle, it is connected to, uh, one more arrow mark is there. That means it is going to connect with the patient with the help of a mask or an acyl cannula. Right, you can see the back side of the machine, the humidifier bottle is connected with a strap. So these are the accessories of the machine. Now, let's look at the front side of this machine. You can see a flow regulator over here, flow regulator. So this flow regulator, we can adjust from zero to five liters per minute. Okay, so flow regulator, we can adjust from zero to five liters per minute. That means it can be zero. That means it won't go anything to the patient, right? So we can rotate the knob, five liters is the maximum. So I told you one more specification. Output oxygen is around 99 percentage. What is the flow of oxygen to the patient? That is around five liters per minute. 
again pulse oximeter we can see the reading and we can adjust this uh, flow regulator for giving more oxygen to the patient but it also have a limitation but as you are not a trained person okay since you are not a completely trained person this is just a webinar without a training you cannot try this kind of things so that will end up in uh, killing the patient so do not attempt any reading because since you are not completely trained with this so comparing these readings or adjusting the machine such things are not practical for you do not try that so there is oxygen concentrator which have dual flow look at this machine what is that you can see there is two flow regulators and there is two humidifier body that means this can be connected to two patients so major brands don't have this type of machine mainly chinese companies are providing this kind of equipment okay so that is what you can see two output is there even some machines also comes with a pulse oximeter this spo2 monitoring can be provided mainly chinese machines have such functions or very higher end branded like one like 1.5 lakhs rupees worth machines are having this kind of functions sound level when the machine is operating there is a sound i told you that is around 45 decibel that is the sound from this weight of the machine i explained maximum hours this machine also has some limitation i told you we can use it for 5 uh, to 6 years of time but how many hours it can work that is around um, i can say around 15000 hours 15000 hours this machine can be used why only 15000 hours yes everything have a limitation right so if you buy a car how many kilometers you can drive a car there is a limitation right so we can say by my around 3 lakhs to 4 lakhs kilometers you can drive a car sometimes so if you maintain properly that is again conditional right maintain properly similar way if you maintain this machine proper way we can use this machine for around 15000 hours but usual cases i can see uh, if you use this machine in a highly dusty area dusted place if your machine is continuously exposed to dust the dust can go inside the machine not only the filter it will even pass the filter it will go to the internal components or if the filter is blocked it will be affecting the functioning of other uh, devices inside the machine and the machine can get failed that is why proper maintenance is required for every kind kind of equipments so this is all the things we discussed okay so there is a lot of instructions where you need to prepare for maintenance and as i told you the filter the filter should be clean the filter should be replaced in a, around say by every 1000 hours you need to replace that filter so the maintenance should be carried out by a technician so the technician is required so who have to visit this locations and they need to uh, perform the maintenance that is a uh, filter replacement is the major one apart from that look at this one humidifier bottle humidifier bottle should be washed with a soap water it should be dried and placed to the machine again so that should be performed by the patient or the patient relatives helper they should uh, do that on a regular basis and secondary filter replacement there is also some machine have a secondary filters that also has to be replaced that can be done by a technician or a trained engineer only so not by everyone and cleaning and disinfection accessories nasal cannula mask or replacement or disinfection is required otherwise it can infect the patient it can become complicated right so that is what so we are going to discuss how this machine is uh, working so you can see is a small animation and uh, which is showing how this machine is working you can see the atmospheric air is left side look at that atmospheric air is entering into this uh, machine and finally you can see the another side where pure oxygen 90 to 95% of oxygen is going why 95 90 to 95% is oxygen is marked is only the top end equipments the higher end equipments will be able to give you 99% so all other kind of average uh, mid segment products will be able to just generate 90 95% because the the technology which is using that limitation which is having so based on that Uh, the product will have some kind of uh, output difference will be there even the cost of the machine also varies based on that so you have whenever you buying a machine you have to look at the specification or whenever a doctor needs a product and they are taking an advice if you are a trained engineer then you should be able to advise on the specifications and the output of the product yes basically how this machine is working is that it is using a material inside this machine that is called zeolite you can see this zeolite the you look at the spelling of this uh, material zeolite is a material which have a property of adsorption of nitrogen 
you know absorption all right absorption is different when you put a sponge into water what happens the sponge will absorb this water but here what happens here is that adsorption 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 is the property of zeolite zeolite is a naturally occurring element it is artificially is available natural material is available this zeolite is used inside this machine for adsorbing in the nitrogen so when the air is entering inside this machine this air you can see the air path you can see here so the air will be entering and from this air nitrogen will be removed by this machine and finally it will be given to this patient so that process we are going to discuss so inside this machine that a red part you can see the red part which is here that is nothing called called a, a sieve bed sieve bed s i e v e sieve bed so sieve bed is you can see in the right side image that blue color one this is aluminum towers it is made up of aluminum and it's a made up of high strength aluminum and inside this sieve towers we will be filling zeolite zeolite is the material which is having properties of adsorption of nitrogen the zeolite will be filled inside this sieve beds so there are you can see three uh, cylinders are available there the middle one goes to the oxygen tank the final oxygen will be stored inside the middle one so both the towers in the upper sides of this oxygen tank that will be filled with zeolite okay now let's look at how this is going to work so i'm going to explain through a block diagram process now look at the starting side which is we have an air input air is connected here right input air is nothing but atmospheric air we don't need to connect anything just switch on the machine switch on the machine what happens compressor is there you can see the next image is uh, the next block is compressor so and before that air intake filter is there so using the compressor uh, compressor will generate a negative pressure so that negative using that negative pressure through the air intake filter it will suck the air inside the machine and compressor what it will do so you see in the filter i already explained about the filter filter is nothing but a, a sponge kind of thing which can block the dust particles and finally that filtered air will goes to the compressor so the compressor will pressurize this air pressurize why the air should be pressurized so that we can send it through the seabed because seabed is filled with zeolite so zeolite is already filled inside the seabed and you want to send the air it is not easy right so that is why we need a compressor so this compressor i have already explained to you this is a compressor you can see compressor is having an input from the filter side air filter side input and then output side from the compressor so the compressor have a high pressurized air that will be having around 60 to 70 psi pounds per square i told you high pressure right so the high pressure air will be generated and that will be given to the sieve beds so before giving to sieve bed what is there we have another device which is called as a magnetic valve okay so this is called as a magnetic valve assembly so this magnetic valve assembly will control it will control the way the air should be sent to this sieve beds right so the magnetic valve we can see it is connected to motherboard as you can see there is a main board over here this main board you can see there is an arrow mark right so this arrow mark is indicating that this magnetic valve is going to be controlled with the help of a microcontroller which is on the motherboard so uh, you can see here uh, this is the uh, magnetic valve assembly and the magnetic valve assembly is containing uh, there is a lot of valves there inside that and through this valves the compressed air will flow to this sieve bed sieve bed 1 and sieve bed 2 so that is what the sieve bed is containing a lot of uh, material inside that is the material is called zeolite so we'll go to that topic now so this is a sieve bed we already discussed that and there is a, a middle part where you can see there is an oxygen tank is also present and the bottom side what we are having is a valve so bottom side is also there is a valve assembly is present you can see the bottom that white block there is also a valve but that is not a uh, solenoid valve so this magnetic valve what is a magnetic valve it is nothing but a solenoid valve that means it can be controlled by with uh, electricity from this Uh, microcontroller with the help of microcontroller we can program it and control it 
But the bottom side of the seabed, there is also another set of valve, which is not controlled by the microcontroller. Right. So zeolite is a material and the uh, seabed uh, or sea tower, which is used, uh, this complete assembly is that is the name. Now look at this um, magnetic wall, how it works. So in the magnetic wall, you can see there's two sections. Okay, so you can see this one is in the yellow eye mark and the right side it is in the white section. Okay, so somebody have shared a link in the chat box. Okay, so there is a lot of materials in the internet, but you cannot learn this in the internet. Okay, because nobody will share how it is uh, working exactly in the internet. Okay, so, so don't focus on that part now. Maybe you can further, you can uh, search and uh, try to learn small, small informations. Okay, so that is it. So there is a magnetic wall. So there is ma two magnet magnetic wall contains two sections, yellow and the white block. And what happens now here, look at this. Each block contains two walls. That means there is four walls inside this assembly. There is four walls are there inside this assembly. So what happens now you can see a white, a, yellow, a blue arrow mark, which I connected there that indicating the high pressurized air from compressor, which is moving to this magnetic wall assembly. From there, now I'm connecting a seabed here, just for representation, seabed is connected. So what happens now? So you can see the second and third wall, through second and third wall, air will go to the seabeds. Second and third wall, air will go to the seabed. Now, one and fourth wall, the nitrogen will be removed from this seabed. So what happens here is that when you send the air, you can see the first cycle from second, second and third wall, the air moves inside the seabed. There is zeolite is present, the granules of zeolite, it is not a desktop powder form, it is in a granule stage. So the granules of zeolite, when the air is passing through that, it will absorb the nitrogen. It will absorb the nitrogen. And as a result, what happens? The nitrogen is absorbed by the material. Now further absorption of the uh, uh, nitrogen by the zeolite will be limited because why? It already absorbed the nitrogen, a certain amount of nitrogen. So that is why we need to release this nitrogen outside now. So that is why in the second cycle, what happens? The wall one and two will open and the nitrogen will be exhausted outside. So this is the process happening. Now I'm explaining in another way now, one by one. Look at this now. The two red circle, which I marked in the bottom of this assembly, there is two more walls there. There is two more walls, I told you already. That walls are not electronic walls. That wall will open whenever there is a pressure inside the seabed. Pressure inside means whenever you are sending an air to the seabed, that is a pressure, right? 50 PSI pressure will be there. The wall opens. Now look at this now. Right, you can see the wall second. First, what happened? Wall second is opening. Wall number two is opening. Air is moving to the seabed. And zeolite inside that seabed, zeolite granules will absorb the nitrogen and the fresh oxygen will go to the outlet side. You can see the arrow mark of O2. Now what we have to do after this process completed, what we need to do, it will be last for maybe for three seconds, right? Because the zeolite have its own limitation, how much it can absorb. Now we need to exhaust the nitrogen. That is why, that, that is why wall two is closed now. You look at the image, wall two is closed and wall number one is open now. When the wall number, op, number one is open, the nitrogen will try to escape from the seabed. That is how the nitrogen will be exhausted. Where is the nitrogen is exhausted? Just to the room. The same room where your machine is placed, nitrogen will be released to the same room. There is no other mechanism or anything, just nitrogen will be released from there. Now, same time, what happens? There is no flow of oxygen to the patient. Why? Because the valve is closed and there is no air oxygen flow to the patient. That is why the second seabed is required. Same time, there is no O2. That is why the seabed uh, second will operate where the third valve is open now. So second valve is op closed now and nitrogen is releasing. Now the third valve is open, air will again flow through that. Zeolite will absorb the nitrogen and oxygen will be released from there to the patient. Now again, same happens. So valve number third is closed and the valve number fourth is open, nitrogen will be released. Similar time, 
the valve number second. So this two function, these two valves, these valves will alternatively function so that it will ensure continuous flow of oxygen to the patient. So hope you understood why there is two seed beds and what is the function of this valve. So now operating this valve, right, the opening and closing timing of this valve, it is also a volumetric function, right? How much air I should send to the seabed? How much uh, nitrogen should be exhausted? For that, how long the valve should be open? How long the valve should be closed? That timing functions are very important in developing this machine. So the valve timing is very important and that is programmed by the development engineers, the programmers, right, developers in the microcontroller. So that is how it works. Okay, Saurav Vijayendran asking question, zeolite absorbs only nitrogen? Yes, it absorbs only nitrogen. That is the property of the material. So it cannot absorb carbon dioxide. That is why I told you, only nitrogen is absorbed. Right, 21 percentage of oxygen, 78 percentage of nitrogen. Carbon dioxide cannot be absorbed. So what happens, nitrogen is removed now, Oxygen is only left and uh, the rest of the gases. That is why I told you it can achieve maximum of 99% of purity. So purity will get affected. How purity will get affected? If this valve timing is not proper, the releasing of nitrogen is not working properly, right? So these all are really little complicated process, right? That is why uh, the technology, that is why we call the technology expertise. The product is developed through a series of experiments Right, and now I cannot say experiments, the trials or trial and error methods they have to program and develop. So now coming back to this uh, block diagram again. Right, so that is what happens here now. Finally, that oxygen will go over. It will go to an oxygen tank. You can see a white tank block over there. That is an oxygen tank. Oxygen tank is connected with a pressure regulator. Because you know that output is here. What is output here? Output is around. 50 psi, the compressor air, how much? 50 psi, I cannot give to the patient. It will damage the lungs of the patient. So that is why we need to add a pressure regulator over here. After the oxygen tank, not before the oxygen tank. On top of the oxygen tank, you can see a green color block that is representing a pressure regulator. The pressure regulator have two parts. Look at this, input part is there and output part, output side, inlet and outlet. So what happens here? Inlet is 50 psi, the outlet will be around 5 psi. I told you to the patient we are giving is only 5 psi. So another information here is that this pressure regulator, it is not an electronic valve. It is, it is just a non-electronic device. You may see in your uh, regulator on your uh, cooking gas, right in your house, in kitchen, you may have a cooking gas. Cooking gas is having a regulator. What is that? It's an electronic. No, it is not an electronic device. It is just a, a regulator. That is the same function here, but what device we are using is very portable and that's all. And from there, that is the interesting part now. You can see there is a yellow block, right? The yellow, say so small yellow block over there. That is a pressure sensor. So this pressure sensor here, what it will do this pressure sensor? The pressure sensor will verify after the regulator, after the pressure regulator, what is the outcome? The outcome is 50 PSI, it is converted into 5 PSI, that is outcome. The, that should be verified before, right? Because it is a safety function. So that is why this pressure sensor will be present on the motherboard, the motherboard or main board. The main board will monitor this pressure. Next, what is the oxygen sensor, right? So you can see the output from the oxygen tank is passing through this green block. Look at this green block. Oxygen from this tank will be going to this block, green block, and then it is going outside. So this green block contains an oxygen sensor. This oxygen sensor will be monitoring the percentage of oxygen. So I told you that the patient should be having minimum, uh, the output will be around 99 percentage. How do we verify that? That is why this oxygen sensor is required. But usually it will be programmed. Okay, see this equipment is not used in an ICU or operation theater. Okay, because I see your operation theater, hospital have their own gas pipelines, many other mechanisms are there. This is mainly for home health care. So this oxygen center will be generally, it is programmed to detect 
around 90 percentage of oxygen. So that means if the oxygen is dropping less than 90 percentage, now this machine will generate alarm. Such kind of alarms will be very rare because it is uh, uh, usually it won't happen immediately or anything. So no need to worry about it. So oxygen sensor is used. It's a, again a safety function. Now finally what happens, it will go to a flow regulator. I already explained this. Outside the machine, there is a flow regulator. You can see that. This is also not an electronic device. Look at this image. There is a knob. Using this knob, we can adjust zero to five liters per minute. We can adjust that. And this is the knob which is we are having here. And we adjust the flow to the patient. And finally, okay, look at this or a flow regulator again, once again. Input connector is there. Output connector is there. There is a knob. So oh, this is a way. And finally, there is a bacteria filter, right? It is connected in series, bacteria filter. And finally, in a dust particles, any kind of contaminations should not be going to the patient. That is why we have a, a small bacteria filter. This bacteria filter does not require any frequent replacement. Maybe five years once, six years once, if your machine is lasting long, right? Then we can go for a bacteria filter. Finally, to the patient. So before connecting to the patient, I told you one more thing. What is that? A humidifier bottle is required. Humidifier bottle, it just comes in the outside the machine. That is why you cannot see humidifier bottle in this block diagram. So humidifier bottle is placed outside. So the air will go to the humidifier bottle, which contains the distilled water. And that will humidify the air and it will be given to the patient. Why we need to humidify? Because the air is passing already through compressor and many other electronic parts. And the humidity content, what is humidity? Humidity is nothing but the water vapors, which is in the air. So if there is no water vapors, and if you're inhaling dry air, dry oxygen, if you're inhaling, your nose will become dry, right? Not only nose, the lungs, everything will become dry and it will start damaging. Okay, I can see there is a lot of question. I will start attending. Let me complete this block diagram. So this is the part. Now, uh, and so Darshan is saying one question. Uh, you said a patient is five PSI, but it varies for each patient. Now, see, five PSI is the pressure which is required to push that air outside. Okay. Pressure, I told you already, we are not going to push air into the lungs of the patient. Oxygen concentrator will never push air into the lungs. So then why five PSI is required? The five PSI is just to create flow because again, this air should flow, oxygen should flow to the humidifier bottle. From humidifier bottle, again, it should flow to the patient. That is why we need that five PSI output. Okay, so, but how, what is affecting the patient, except how much patient is going to receive? That is based on the flow we are setting. I told you flow can be set from zero to five liters per minute zero to five liters per minute is the flow rate we need to set. So that means five liters per minute, if we keep it, the patient will get a lot of oxygen, right? The pressure is not related to that. Pressure is just related, just like a voltage and current. Okay, that is the same thing. Flow, flow means what? Current, what? Uh, what is the, uh, flow means what? Flow is a current, right? The pressure means like a volt, voltage. So just similar uh, case here. So that is why that uh, happened. Flow, it is based on the, flow regulator adjustment we need to make. Again, keep in mind, no, we are not pushing there. So some other questions I am seeing here. Yes, how much pressure oxygen should be given to the patient? Yeah, I told you pressure doesn't matter, but the output of the machine should be minimum five PSI. Okay, minimum five PSI is a machine output. So then only it will reach the nose tip of the patient properly. Otherwise it will be it won't reach, right? So pressure is pressure. See, pressure and flow are connected. So you have to just understand that basic. Okay, so that is the thing. Now I will explain a little more in a different way. Look at this diagram now. Okay, so Karim Ullak Hakim is asking another question. What are the components of a bacteria filter? Components of bacteria filter is, it contains a, a, a kind of a material which will be blocking the bacteria. Obviously bacteria is a, what you can say, it's a microscopic, uh, organism. So to filter the bacteria, there is a, a very fine uh, filter is required. That is what, apart from that, in the bacteria filter, there is also kind of agents, like it will uh, disinfect the air which is going to the patient. Okay, 
So like a isopropyl kind of, it's not a purely isopropyl, A minus the of isopropyl will be there inside this bacteria filter, which will disinfect the air, which is going to the patient. So my, bacteria filter means nothing but a filter which can filter microscopic organism. But primary filter we discussed, that will block the dust particle. Dust particle is not a microscopic, right? Dust particles are general dust particles. So that is a difference between these two things. Okay. Now look at this one. So uh, we have need a 230 volt supply to the machine. And from there, obviously there is a compressor and it is a capacitance slot. There is a capacitor which is required. And that is how the compressor will be turned on. Now finally, the air will enter into the air filter. Look at the diagram. And what is there? And from the compressor, the high pressure air, pressurized air will be given to the magnetic wall. That black block here now indicate the magnetic wall. And from there, what happens? Yeah. So you can see from there, there is a seabed, right? That the blue block is indicating seabed. The nitrogen will be exhausted. Exhausted means it will be just exhausted, I would say. And, and there is also an oxygen tank. From there, uh, you can see there is an uh, oxygen sensor. There is a pressure sensor, which is outside the pressure regulator. Finally, it goes to the flow regulator, right? We can adjust the flow. Finally, it's given to the patient. Somebody is asking, what is a microcontroller used? See, microcontroller used is not a problem here, okay? Even you can use a 16-bit microcontroller. You can use for that. So it is not depends upon, it's based on the program, the algorithms, it's written for that. So I can say the major challenge here is mechanical design. Mechanical design is the one of the major challenge. Yes, obviously the programming and the testing, such kind of things are required. So I explained, I just, uh, yes. Now you can see inside this machine now, right? So what you can see here, the ma one machine is opened. Okay, so you can see the compressor, right? So we can see a compressor over here. There is a, you can see the bacteria filter over here. So look at this compressor. Uh, so first one is that primary filter, right? The primary filter is here. And from there, and from there it can goes to this silicon tubing, right? From silicon tubing, it can go to this compressor. And there is a capacitor, right? You can see the capacitor. It works from the lab 230 volt because the compressor is working on 230 volt. And there's a microcontroller board, right? There's a board. And so, and again, you can see the board. The board have a lot of sensors, I told you, pressure sensor, oxygen sensor, and many other components are there, like a small transformer, uh, like a voltage regulators. There is also a buzzer. That is one important thing you can see. If you're in the right image, you can see there is a small black object here. That is a buzzer. What is, why a buzzer is required is that if you turn off the ac machine ac accidentally or the power failed, right? The supply voltage is failed. The machine generate alarm. So that we need to connect the patient, we need to make an alternative. Obviously, if it is a critical patient, there will be alternative option required. Power is failed, what happens? An oxygen cylinder is required. Oxygen cylinder is required as a standby. Okay, so oxygen cylinder is required as a standby. Why capacitor is required? Nandini is asking, why a capacitor? Because it needs to give an initial torque, right? It is based on a capacitance load, just like your fan. Right, ceiling fan, you may see a capacitor, the same process. You need to generate a high pressure, right? Initial torque is required. That is why this capacitor is required. A cooling fan is required. The capacitor, uh, this uh, compressor will be heated. And that is why uh, this uh, cooling fan is required. Seabed. I already explained this, seabed is here, which is um, aluminum towers. The capacitor is for a compressor. Prakash is asking, the capacitor is for compressor, yes. So the seabed, this material, I told you about the zeolite, right? So there is a powder form and granule form. The granule form is used. And one more major information here is that 
uh, this uh, uh, granules, right? The zeolite, it is on, it's a natural occurring material. Mainly this deposition is available in China. Okay, India don't have the deposition of this zeolite. So it may have, but again, separation, everything is a complicated process. The China is having more than 70% of the deposition of zeolite in the world itself, in the earth. So the China is the main source of the supply material. So that is the one thing to know about. So what is the purpose of aluminum towers? Aluminum towers is nothing but it is the zeolite is filled inside. We call it seabed, right? The, so, so aluminum is a strong material, right? Iron cannot be used because iron is very heavy. So aluminum is used. So somebody is asking what is the importance of instrumentation engineering? Just see, if you want to work with development of medical equipment, right? So you should know how the uh, product is developed, how the product is working, what are the requirements? If you want to, if you are passionate about learning about the medical device segment, uh, medical equipment development. So understanding the industry is very much important. How exactly the industry is working? What is the requirement for a patient? What is the requirement for the doctors in their health industry? And what are the different type of technology which is used? And without knowing that, the, without knowing having the realistic knowledge about the industry, you cannot even start thinking because you start developing something which will be already in the market sometimes or the industry is already developed of more of far from that already, right? So that is why we are uh, conducting this kind of webinars, which will be annoying. As well as if you are an engineer, you can also work in uh, service engineer, medical equipment. So this is a basic equipment, but there is many other equipments like ventilators, ultrasound machines, many hospital equipments, medical equipment companies appoint engineers, electronics and communication engineer, biomedical engineer. They are also preferred very highly. And instrumentation, they all can work in this industry as uh, service engineer, customer support engineer. There is different other jobs like testing engineer, many things. So they all need to have in-depth knowledge on the medical equipment. So that is why we are covering this topic for their learning. And obviously the practical experiences are also much required. So I told you about the solenoid valve. You can see the where the location, the solenoid valve is placed on the top of the seabed. Right, so portable oxygen concentrator you can see here, right? So this is a, a very portable device. If you look at the China, like a Shanghai, Beijing, they're all highly polluted cities. The people already started using oxygen concentrator. They already started purchasing oxygen concentrator because they want to breathe a quality of oxygen. So it's a portable device, but the output of this machine will be very low, say by a two PSI, or output flow can be three liters per minute maximum but it is portable and uh, output rating is low. That means internal compressor rating and other related functions are also low. So it also have such kind of machines also have inbuilt battery. Okay, so Sindhu is asking another question. Uh, what is that? If nitrogen is released to the same room, whether patient will be harmed, right? No, the nitrogen will, is not harmful for patients. Okay, so obviously you should not place this machine on a closed room. See, already we can see 78% of your atmospheric air is nitrogen. Is it harmful to you? Right, no. That means nitrogen is not going to harmful for the patient. But the, the room you are placing oxygen concentrate it should be ventilated. Okay, but it should not be a dusty area. That is another thing. Because the dust can inside, go inside and damage. Some questions are very long and uh, is difficult to read and explain at the moment. So I'm not uh, going to that. Okay, you can connect me in LinkedIn, but uh, you can uh, send me that kind of questions there. So you can see the manufacturers, you can see this is a NIDAC. It's a Chinese brand, but it's a very well reputed brand and you can buy cost effective machines. A lot of engineers, instrumentation engineer, biomedical engineers, they work in this uh, kind of companies, NIDAC. AirSup is a US based brand. It's a very expensive equipment. 60, 70,000 is the starting price of this equipment. And uh, this is Devil Blaze. It's a U UK based brand. So it's also expensive around 80, 90,000 is the starting price of this product. So questions and answers. I already answered many questions. 
So how to remove, another question is uh, Dheeraj, how to remove carbon dioxide? See, carbon dioxide removing is not very relevant here in the home healthcare equipment because it is just one percentage. One percentage is present and that is not going to harm for, for the patient.